that's fucking itchy. That's Winchester. Hello everyone and welcome to the Rock Report podcast in association with Sunderland Community Soup Kitchen. And you join us after Sunderland's 1-0 win against the FC Wimbledon. I'm with Mike Dunn. How are we doing, mate? All good. It's been a while since we've heard your voice. I know, yeah. And in real life now, we're talking in person now. Yeah. How many pints had? Uh, You've been out since seven about eight, or eight, eight yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel a little bit shook now. Yeah, the, the Irish is coming out in you. And uh, Ant Watson's here. How's Ant? I'm all right, mate. Just half expect me broadband to go off, but... No? It's, like, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. And uh, first time this season, it's Tom Albrighton. Hi. <laughs> so you're, Tom you're, you've, you've, you've got a gob on you. What, what's, what's with the nerves like? No, I'm all right. I'm just, I'm fairly like, I'm quite placid at the minute. Strong painkillers. So. Something, uh, there's something wrong with you, because... Just to let the listeners know, I offered Tom a beer and he said no, so... Namaste. Yeah, <laughs> right oh. So, Sonnen then, 1-0 today, Mike. Yeah. Uh, it was it was all right, wasn't it? Like, it's a bit of a weird one to try and analyse, isn't it? A win's a win. Like, we were fairly shy first half, like, to be honest. Um, yeah, but we got the result. First half was poor. We couldn't string passes together in midfield. We kind of couldn't get on top of the game. But second half needs to be a few chances. Eventually got the goal. I think it was a massive deflection of Winchester's goal, was it? Yeah. But uh, we probably should have more. Pritchard missed a good chance, and Stewart as well. But yeah, we got the win. But we definitely can play better than that. You, you'd imagine that. Like. Yeah, it was uh, for me. And I think I think we were the better team. I think if you were going to analyse the performance over ninety minutes, Sunderland were definitely the better side. Oh, yeah. But it wasn't like a scintillating performance. It wasn't as good as Burton, and we got beat at Burton. So. No, it, it just seemed a bit. I think I think Philip were on on Twitter at our time. It seemed as if they were a little bit like unfit, a little bit tired after three yeah. big games in a week. Maybe, yeah. um, obviously, McGee looked leggy. Gooch looked a bit leggy. Um, we looked a little bit unbalanced with Dan Neal at left back. Um, but it's a night. Mike said, "A win's a win." You know, we've won three games out of our first four. We've got to be over the moon with that, haven't we? You know, it doesn't matter how we win as long as we win. That's it. What do you think Lee Johnson says to those players at full time, Tom? I don't know, because it, it, it's a funny game, isn't it? It was like, we were comfortable, but we weren't excellent. And it, I suppose when you, con- you contrast it against a Burton game, we were by far the better team, but didn't get anything from it. It's hard to digest, really. I think there's a few players here that book their ideas up slightly. I think. I would agree with that, I yeah. Think, I think I want the wings, especially. I think Gucci McGeady need yeah. a bit of a rocket, because especially with a few more players in the, in the squad now, I want to think the place is as safe as it would have been. Uh, I wasn't impressed with Gucci midfield again. And I thought oh, Winchester yeah, was fantastic. Let's not, skip, let's not skip over that. Gucci today worked his socks off, but like just there was no quality there. And it's, I, was, it was, I, was, I felt the same after, after Burton midweek. Like, Gucci for me, he, he needs to turn up more often. I'm, I'm not picking at him because I think, I think when you're a good side and you're expected to like, get promoted, you need your attacking players to, to show a bit more and today like his touch there was a lot of times today where the ball come out from the back 40 50 yard rake past the feet his first touch was brilliant and then after that it was like right settle the ball down what do i do and by that point the, the like the, the moment had gone it's almost like he doesn't know how to get the ball in the box it's like i was looking at it again and what i thought is both wingers look like they've not realised that it's not white in the middle anymore because with white he was so static and you never knew where he had to be they had to take the extra touch to see where he was to try and get something to him Stuart's always buzzing in and around that penalty area and he's always sort of around the penalty spot or on the edge of the six yard box so I think they just need to trust where Stuart's going to be take the touch shift it and just get the ball in don't take that two three extra touches because you've got a striker in there who actually knows what he's doing for a change I think McKeithy's fit and no, 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 absolutely not. You can tell he's not at a pre-season, can't you? Yeah. Like he's just really, really slow as well. Even for Ian McGeady's older. standards, he's getting older, like he is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he is. But you expect from McGeady to put, yeah. you know, he's at least the odd quality ball in or something like that. But every time it went, we just seemed to slow down and it, it, it let Wimbledon get back into positions where they shouldn't have been in. Really, you know, loads of times where I thought Embleton got the ball out really nicely, got the ball quickly, and. Um, McGeady was just slowing it down straight away so I mean I would rest him for Tuesday I'll probably rest him for next Saturday as well against Wigan to be honest to give him a break you know he's, he's not fit I thought, uh, I thought Dan Neal had a great game though left back yeah, if I was yeah. I would have pushed him up to left wing take McGeady off fire earlier than he did O'Neill was, was so much more direct you could beat his man as you said McGeady was slowing the game down and everything he did was going wrong he was losing the ball constantly stupid he always does the thing where he wants to take on a man inside the box take a shot 
it's blocked every single time. But yeah, I drop him. Dan Neil had a great game. I would have pushed him to the left wing. Dan Neil's been a bit of a revelation, any Tom, for me. Like, oh, by a mile. I just think he's so he's so technically sound as well. He never looks flustered on the ball. His positional sense is always really good. Gets in between the man and the ball really well when he's defending. And the only what I've got really is I just feel he's wasted at left back yeah, yeah. I think that, that's the only issue and again I mean same for Winchester as well we've got two really technically gifted midfielders here that are being pushed to left back and right back I think if we can obviously we've got Cirk in there get him fit and you know maybe bring in a bit of defensive colour getting those two in midfield could really revolutionise our season yeah. in the next three or four weeks like. so the, the big news in the, the warm up was Burge dropping out Patterson came in how do you think he did Mike because for me for me I thought actually Patterson today he just did everything simple yeah. nothing daft very composed but he had nothing to do really like we yeah. were not offered nothing but uh, he did everything right even at the end there Header came in he held on to the ball well slowed everything down uh, I think there was one time he might have came off his line for a corner or a cross yeah. and he yeah, missed, and he missed it. it and yeah. we got away with it really yeah, yeah. yeah. but other than that he had a really good solid start now like and to be honest he's no worse than Burge like no. <laughs> um, you won't be really worried about him going in as number one for, uh, as the game season goes on like I guess it's more to do with sort of leadership qualities yeah. and whether he's got got the I don't know so you, you expect your goalkeeper to be a presence on the pitch yeah. to me I don't know you can't really hear him but he doesn't like seem to have that yet but that, that'll only come with experience won't it he gesticulated a lot though you could see there was a lot of times he had the ball and he's gesticulating there to slow it down and calm down but I think his distribution is, is streets ahead of Virgie oh, yeah. you know there was two or three times a day distributed with his right and his left he's putting it into channels he's finding the man over the top short direct so he, he looks I wouldn't say he looks as good as what he could be as good as Pickford but he certainly looks like he's oh there's a bold claim no, no, Pickford no, no I'm not saying he's going to be as good but he, look, he certainly looks at the same mould you can yeah, tell they've been moulded by you, 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 can, you can sort of see the education of the goalkeeper in the academy yeah yeah definitely like little things he played a couple of sidewinders you don't see a load of keepers especially in this division playing the sidewinders playing them fine you know like you say there's a lot of things you can you can tell that from the same education, kind of the way the control of the ball, the area, and the distribution line. So, yeah. a modern way now, isn't it, for the goalkeeper now to be a distribution? Yeah. Um, the, I thought he was, to be honest, for his first, this is his debut in the league. Yeah, let's um, not forget that actually. Yeah, in front of fans as well. Yeah, being thrown upon it because obviously he wasn't picked to, to start. Birch was to start. Better, he's kept a clean sheet. He's not put a foot wrong, really. Bar what Mike says, a little one when he came out, thought he was, thought he was like Roman Reigns with a Superman punch. Bar that, he was, he was absolutely fantastic. Be fair to him. I don't mind the keeper doing that. I know he missed the ball, but I don't mind the keeper being proactive because he comes and claims that. Yeah, yeah. Box, he com- contrasts the keepers we've had before. He was just glued to the line, like McLaughlin and Birch were both glued to the line when anything was in. I don't mind to keep up doing that. If he gets it wrong, he gets it wrong. But at least he's trying to be positive. Like. Just, just very quickly as well on goalkeeper front, I thought Wimbledon's goalkeeper was absolutely outstanding. Did you? Yeah, like, yeah. The opposite. I, I was a bit mixed on that. Like, and I think I saw your WhatsApp. Oh, I was like, mm, I'll bring that up later on. <laughs> he made some excellent saves. Or the one from Wimbledon where he pulled over yeah. them. I, mean, I, I was right behind where I'm sitting. I was literally right behind that. It was going right in the top corner. He pulls it right. Great save. I agree about his distribution. It was awful, but. Shot stopping, can't yeah. much wrong, like. Let's, that's a quick word on uh, Callum Doyle today. For me, like, brilliant. I can't believe he is 17 year old. Yeah. <laughs> I say it every week. Physically, like, a big bloke, but he, even, like, the way he plays, like, he heads and wins everything. But then, aside from that, he's playing 60, 70 yard passes to feed the people. I mean, you can, again, I've just talked about the education of the goalkeeper there. You can see what system he's come through, can't you, Mike? Like, he is good. He's streets ahead, I'd say, most centre backs in this league. Like, what a what a find that was for most. In fairness, speaking and Johnson, whoever was on that, he's just so composed the ball. His distribution is perfect. Um, yeah, he just he looks so much much more mature than he is for a 17 year old. And like, we're very lucky to have him this season. He could be the difference between us going up, like, and not like comparison to the centre house we had last season. And I have to say, Flanagan had a good game as well. Like, yeah, Flanagan's yeah, yeah. looking good. Like. And I don't know, I think Johnson's actually worked on him with his distribution and his composure on the ball. He looks much better than he did last season or any season he's been at Sutherland before this. I think on Doyle as well, um, I think it was in the 70th minute or so, 
where he, he went I like, went on an amazing run and he knew he was going to get hit by a midfielder who came across. He knew he was going to take it, took the hit, you know, took the treatment and all that, whatever it was. But he was straight back up, straight, straight one to get straight back into it. And the lad's 17 years old. It's, just, it's, it's phenomenal, you know, what a player he's going to end up being. Yeah, I think just to, you're right, Flanagan for me, I, I'm like, like most fans, to be fair, we've been we've been right when we've criticised Tom Flanagan for some bad performances, mistakes, etc. I think, when in the absence of any other sort of competition in pre-season, him and Doyle have put a decent partnership together, and then the season started, and this is as well as I've seen Tom Flanagan play for Sunderland. Like, and I, I, I think sometimes you just got to hold your hands up and say a fair play. Like, he, he he totally deserves any sort of praise. Now we can give him um, the other the other thing we haven't even talked about really Carl Winchester today I mean the goal alright there's a touch of fortune there he takes the shot on but he's all around performance for me from right back outstanding like he, he's a he's another one who's came out of the woodwork isn't he Tom well, yeah I suppose you could say that is I know he didn't come with a growing reputation from Forest Green but He's always shown in a Sunderland shape. He's, he's another technically gifted footballer. He's got a good first touch. He gets his head up, good range of passing. Does all the basics right. Uh, the only complaint I would have, again, is similar to Daniel. I feel like he's a little bit wasted at right back. I think in the centre of the park, he'd be absolutely revolutionary for us. So you, you, but you say that, right? But who would you throw in? Like, who, who, would, who would you take out of the mix to throw him in, you know? Well, on, on the back of the day, I would see O'Neill. I, really? would, I wasn't impressed with O'Neill. I think he was... Yeah, he was, he was hitting... I thought, I thought O'Neill was hitting this. Uh, he wasn't great in the challenges. He did put a few good ones in. Uh, I know he popped his shoulder at the end of the game and admirably carried on, which is fair enough. But the first half an hour, he, he just couldn't string a pass together. There was a few times he needed an extra two or three touches. Uh, you know... Was it a bad performance? I wouldn't say it was horrendous. It wasn't great. It was very middle of the road. But I feel like, you know, you put Winchester in that position, would you get a better player out of him? And, I, you know, I almost feel that O'Neill is probably a little bit better suited to being right back because he's just, he's energetic and he likes getting involved. But he's, I don't feel he's great getting involved for 90 minutes, whereas a right back kind of comes in and out of the game more. So... I don't know, it's one for the management to ponder, never mind us in a pub, so, yeah. you know. Well, to be fair, I, I'm, I'm like, uh, I, I, th- I always get quite defensive with Luke O'Neill because I think, I think he does get a lot more stick than he deserves in terms of he's just, I'm not talking about his personality as a, as a bloke or whatever, just his ability as a footballer, I think, I think he's a lot better than people give him credit for. Um, today was a weird one because... Wimbledon didn't try really to I mean they the knocked it around the back four and the keeper and then they went long it was pretty much all they did in the game so there was no real midfield battle there which in one instance was great for us because um, because Embleton was able to get on the ball a lot sort of receiving it from the central defenders feeding it through the midfield looking for options ahead of them I mean and just a, just a side note on that to be fair uh, I mean, we, we've just stopped the crab-like passing in midfield. We've, we're trying to play a lot more and, and, and go go forward with the ball. And that's that's quite clearly a, a change that's been made over the summer. So when they're giving the ball to Hamilton, he's trying his best to, to make something happen. I think they sort of need that player next to him who breaks it up, wins the second balls, goes in for the duels when there's a long ball to win. You know, you, you, you can't have like two Dan Neils in the middle of the park. You, you need somebody who's going to be a little bit more uh, streetwise, I guess. And I think that's probably Luke O'Neill's role in the team. I think for me, O'Neill's one of those players where he's, he's not quite here or there. I think athletically and physically, he's very much a centre midfielder because he can do all those things and he can buzz around. But I just think when it gets to sort of like, you know, getting the ball down, passing it and spraying it, He's just slightly lacking behind other footballers. And I think that was a little bit evidenced sort of this afternoon. Last 10 minutes, Dan Neil moved into midfield. And Neil looked far more comfortable on the ball than O'Neill did all game. But 
I also understand that Daniel isn't going to win the head as against six foot four centre mids or centre back. So it's a bit of give and take, and I think it's something that you could probably tweak depending on the teams you play. Teams that want to get down play technical football. I think Neil's probably better suited in there. Teams who want to be physical, I think Owen Iron's better suited in there, just as like a, a disruptive influence kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so final thoughts and happy. Yeah, really happy. Like I said, if you give me nine points out of 12 at the start of August, I'd have took it. Um, I think next week against Wickham at home is a very, very difficult game, but I think we can do it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, just it's just night and day from what we were watching last year. Like like you said there with Emerald and Neil, just so much better football. I doesn't always come off, but at least they've got the guts and they've got the balls to do it. You yeah. know what I mean? And seeing Ross Stewart, like this is the first time I've saw Ross Stewart live. Uh, he, that's just a proper striker you know like you said with Winchester someone who's willing to get forward it, it was just so much from what we saw last year being bored even though we're winning games 1-0 or whatever being like bored on the stream trying to think of something to say and now we're like kind of forgetting things so uh, and much, uh, like, out of the four games I'm, I'm over the moon to be honest my me, me brother-in-law said that when I was sat with him there saying I'd rather watch this than watching us win like scraping scraping wins or scraping draws like it, it is nice at the watching it Mike yeah well, there's like an identity and a style of play like you know what we're trying to do you know how we're trying to play um, and with that style of football you're definitely going to win more games than you lose like it's, yeah. with Parkinson last year you're eventually going to get caught up for playing shit football people can beat you down but next week definitely be a more challenge I think it'd be kind of similar to Burton the way his style of play will be um, but the way we're going it's all, it's all positive signs and just it needs to continue on get maybe more consistency in our, in our play but that will come as you play more together because it's a completely new squad like yeah happy yeah. ultimately yeah, I mean yeah yeah yeah. Your, your, your route of reports Mr. Uh, Mr. on the fence aren't you no I'm fairly happy like I said I'll take 9 points from 12 games that, that points per game average is going to see you up there at the top of the table at the end of the season I just one worry I have going forward is not many people might have it but thinking a lot further forward is managing to keep this squad together because there's some very very good footballers in this squad there's a few on loan there's a few young players who I think if, if clubs in the division above are looking especially towards sort of like you know early days but Doyle and Neil look absolutely fantastic and I think keeping a hold of them for the rest of the season is going to be imperative um, especially Doyle because he's just future England centre back written all over you know but happy and I think we've got a bit of variation from the bench now we're making substitutions and actually changing shape and changing tact which is nice keeps teams on the toes keeps everyone guessing I think nine points from an available 12 we've got a relatively fit squad a young squad and I think it's shaping up quite nicely going forward like yeah I'm, I'm like I'm over the moon I mean a win's a win in it first clean sheet of the season by the way true yeah which I, we haven't talked about, it. yeah, <laughs> with, with a different goalkeeper. Um, you never know, there could be another new goalkeeper coming through. Uh, actually, let's, let's talk about that quickly, right? <laughs> Fido Minone, right? I won't go into the specifics of it, but when you, when you hear Sunderland linked to a player like Vito Minone, and, I mean, I, I'm not saying he's like a world beater, but when you're in League One, he, he's, he's better than what we've got, and he. He's immediately going to come in and be the best goalkeeper in the league, immediately. So uh, that, that just says it all about it. I mean, obviously, what, what, what's been said behind the scenes, it's looking as if he wants to come. I would be absolutely over the moon if Edom Manone is signed for Sunderland. I mean, can you imagine like that back four with like, Doyle, you know, the experience of Flanagan in there with a, an experienced goalkeeper who's been there, he's done it, he's played in the Premier League, you know, he's played, he's played in cup finals. You know, that's, it's a proper goalkeeper, that, you know what I mean? And, and how good that's going to be for Patterson. Yeah. With Beto coming in, I mean that'll be. Well, <laughs> just as good you, as you, you, you say that, but I actually wonder whether the you know if you brought Vito Minoni and whether Patterson might go out on loan. How much would he learn under Patterson uh, under Minoni? Well, you know what yeah. I mean. When he's training or something like that, how much he's going to learn from like a top quality goalkeeper coming in? But yeah. that's not like beating him on the bush. Minoni was a Premier League goalkeeper with Sunderland, and he was a good goalkeeper for us. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't as if he was throwing the balls in every week. You know he was good quality goalkeeper so it can only be good for us on the pitch and off the pitch for like the likes of Patterson and uh, the young lads who come Carney and uh, Richardson I think he is a big yeah, top yeah, yeah, lad yeah. it can only be a good thing for us off and on the pitch yeah what do you think Mike if you know if he, uh, uh, I'd love to see it happen but I don't know why I just have a feeling it's not going to happen like <laughs> well, I hate to break it beat it down <laughs> yeah I mean 
the only reason this wouldn't happen is if Monaco don't want it to happen yeah. um, I mean I don't want to say it too much but he, he wants to come like that's been made clear from the club's perspective the club the club have made it very clear that they want him but whether Monaco will want to get rid of a third choice goalkeeper who doesn't cost them a lot of money is another thing and I think if we if we do get him it's going to be a bit of persuading from our side and from from probably the player's side actually whether he comes or not what I will say is if we had to buy Dick Advocate's wife a bunch of flowers <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to dig pretty fucking deep for Mrs Minoni to get her to leave Monaco and sort of fill with our side well, hey, what, what, for me now. what's wrong with Sunderland like? <laughs> not wrong with Sunderland but it ain't the court as you are is it? Oh. <laughs> I oh, know, no, no, we'll leave it there. Uh, thanks, Ads. We'll, we'll be back tomorrow with the review show, uh, which I think I'm hosting again, so if you're sick of my voice, just don't bother. And we'll uh, catch you later. Cheers. Well, I'm a golden idol, no. Well, I'm a hidden eye, certain all, and always I am.